Hey, y'all. This song got so good to me, I had to bring my church band on with me. What I want to know is, how many of you believe that Jesus will make a way out of no way? Is that right? Well, come on and wave your hands if you really, really believe it. Hallelujah. Who opens doors? Hey, hey, y'all, that's not only my jam, but it's my testimony every day. No matter what you're going through, Jesus will make a way. He will fight your battles. He will go ahead of you and make your enemies your footstool. The Lord will take care of it all for you if you trust him. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Crazy Faith TV. I'm your boy, Pastor John, and I want to personally thank you for worshiping with us this week. At this time, please join me in saying our church vision, mission, and theme statement. We are Allen Chapel, the house of crazy faith. In this place, we worship, study, and believe God's word. We endeavor to create an atmosphere for healing, deliverance, and breakthroughs for every aspect of our lives. Our mission is to be a safe haven of peace for our community. In this place, no dream is too big. Our praise is authentic. We walk in our purpose and God always hears and answers our prayers. We are the house of crazy faith and we believe God. Wherever you are this week, I know that God's hand is with you and that you are prospering and doing everything according to God's will for your life. Crazy Faith partners and believers across the nation, thank you so much for continuing to sow into the life of Allen Chapel in Hot Springs, Florida. The work of this great ministry is continuing to thrive and flourish just because of you. Please be reminded that you can continue to sow seeds via our Giveify account. The link is right at the bottom of this video in the descriptions on our YouTube account. And you can also send your tithes and offerings and your seed offerings to Allen Chapel P.O. Box 1335 Hot Springs, Florida 32655. We love you and we appreciate everything you do to help us continue to grow. 
At this time, let's go ahead and get ready for the word. The Lord has placed a special, special word on my heart for this season of resurrection that he wants you to hear and wants you to share. So get ready to be blessed. I pray that the Lord speaks to you and ministers to you in a special way. Let's get into the sanctuary. Praise the Lord, believers. God bless you. And let's get into the word today. I'm so excited to share this word with you. And I pray that throughout this week that you will take the time to meditate on this word as we are still celebrating the season and the power of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, right now, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for another week's journey. We thank you for one more day. Lord, I pray that everyone who is experiencing any hard times and trials, any sickness, that because of your word, because of your power, you will reach them right where they are right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for every family, for every mother, for every grandmother, for every child, daughter that will come in contact with this message, Lord. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me the words that will bring new life, words that will bring joy and peace to the hearts and minds of every believer that connects in faith with us today. Bless this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are still in the season of the resurrection. The resurrection experience is not just limited to one particular Sunday, but it is a season that we are to reflect on what the resurrection means for us in the body of Christ as believers and as we uh, try to offer Christ to those who may still be lost and trying to find their way. So today I want to share this message with you from the heart. I want to look at just one verse in particular, the book of Romans chapter 8, verse number 1. The book of Romans chapter 8, verse number 1. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. From these words, I want to preach from the subject, the work of the resurrection, the work of of the resurrection. As I stated previously, um, the resurrection is not just an isolated event or incident, but the resurrection is a perpetual work of God that is coming to us through the life and now crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the power of the resurrection, we are now experiencing a new beginning because every time something is resurrected from the dead, it is now given a chance to live again. And so with this new life, with this new experience comes an opportunity for us to receive and experience Christ in a beautiful and more intimate way. And so my family and friends, as we navigate through this message today, I want to explain to you exactly what the work of the resurrection looks like in our lives as we journey through this season of resurrection towards Pentecost. As we look at this one verse of scripture, this one verse will tell us poetically the real power and the real purpose of the resurrection that we are ever changed and ever transformed from the old life that we were in prior to our meeting Jesus Christ and that we are going full steam ahead into a new walk and into a new dimension in our lives and in God's grace. And so my family and friends, let's look at this one scripture together. It says, um, for those who are in Christ, you are not condemned because you are now walking not according to the flesh, but you are walking according to the spirit. So my brothers and sisters, the first part of the work of the resurrection is, is that the work of the resurrection is to draw us closer to Christ. Please pay attention to what I said. The work of the resurrection, number one, its first objective is to draw us closer to Christ and not the church. One of the biggest mistakes I think we make is not only preachers, but just as believers and the saints in general. When it comes down to our Christian discipleship, we spend so much time selling the church and selling our ministry and selling us as individual bodies of believers, and we leave Jesus completely 
completely out of the scenario. But Jesus says definitively in the Gospels that if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all women, all men, all children, all souls unto me. So my family and friends, we have to be careful in this season of resurrection, even with us worshiping virtually. We have to get to a place where Christ is always being magnified, where Christ is always being lifted up because I can have church and not have Christ. A lot of people have a lot of church, have a lot of discipline, have a lot of religion and have a lot of structure, but they have no Christ. And so the real power of the resurrection is not to offer the church to you, but is to offer Christ to you. So before I even go further in this message for someone who's listening today, I offer Christ to you and whatever your situation is, whatever your pain is, whatever your sorrow is, wherever you're hurting, I offer Christ to you. No ministry logo will bring you closer to him. No real fancy church creed or motto or theme will bring you closer to him. Jesus Christ is the only way for us to get to this full promise that God has in store for us. And so as the work of the resurrection is manifesting in our lives, I challenge you to draw closer to Christ. I love the church. I've been in the church all of my life, but we have to get to a place where we meet people where they are and we have to be cognizant of the fact that everybody will not read the Bible, but they will be able to read the gospel according to us. And you are the best and sometimes the only version of the word that people will ever get to experience. Secondly, as we examine getting closer to Christ through the work of the resurrection, we also realize that in the work of the resurrection, the second principle that the work of the resurrection teaches us is that God is trying to separate us from our flesh. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the work of the resurrection is also to help us to deny our flesh. Let's look at this text one more time. It tells us, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, watch this now, who walk not after the flesh. One of the biggest, 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 biggest battles that we, that are, we as believers face is that we have to go up against our flesh on a daily basis. We may never do what someone else does to the extent of lying and drinking and doing drugs and cheating and stealing. However, in your life, even today, as you sit and go throughout this week, you will have to come up against a spiritual battle in your flesh. And my brothers and sisters, the power of the resurrection wants you to understand that when Christ died, so did your flesh. You were no longer a slave to the sin that used to control you before you came in contact with Jesus Christ. And so my brothers and sisters, this challenge is for everyone who's watching this broadcast, for everyone who needs to get to the next place God wants to lead you to. Leave your flesh out of every conversation you have this week. You have to learn how to walk according to my next place. Point, which is walking in the spirit and not according to the way you feel. My brothers and sisters, some of the worst trouble you will ever find yourself in is that you reacted to your flesh instead of reacting to the voice of God in your life. But the beauty and the power and the real work of the resurrection takes us out of the flesh. When God resurrected Jesus from the dead, Jesus got up and the dead flesh of sin, the dead flesh of guilt, the dead flesh of everything that we did to separate us from the love of God it stayed in the grave where he was so God wants us in this season let the resurrection work in your life let your life be transformed let your mind be transformed let your mouth be transformed let God do some real radical work in your life last but not least those of us who are allowing ourselves to experience this great work of the resurrection will ultimately realize that not only whether resurrection lead us to Jesus, not only will it cause us to step out of our flesh, but the real work of the resurrection must also help us to walk according to the spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says in the gospel of John chapter 4 verse 24, Jesus says that God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
One of the major problems and one of the major challenges that I think that we face in our bodies of worship is that when people come into worship, they're not coming in with a spirit of worship or with the spirit of reverence, but they're coming in way down by whatever problems they walk out of their house with. They're thinking about whatever hell they're walking into their jobs with. People are not coming to worship just to feel a move of God. Some people come to worship just to be distracted from all of the problems that they catch on Monday through Saturday and to not have to deal with whatever the mess they put up with on their on in their own homes on a daily basis. Sometimes for some people church is just a distraction in this resurrection season. The Lord wants you to try him by him. That means take God at his word and let God help you to make every move that you want to make in this season. That means you've got to walk according to the spirit. After you've stepped out of your flesh that means your next step is with with Jesus before I say yes to this job Lord I want to make sure that you're there because I want to be spiritual in everything that I do I don't want to be emotional I don't necessarily have to be rational all the time but Lord as long as your spirit is on me I know everything will be all right so the resurrection is working for us family the resurrection is pushing us towards Christ the resurrection is taking us out of our flesh the resurrection is helping us to walk in the spirit but last but not least, the Bible tells us right here in this verse that the main objective of the resurrection is, is to forever change our name. How do you know that, Brother John? I know that because it right says it right here in the text that there is no condemnation. That means that there is no prescribed punishment for those of us who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Whatever you were before you met Jesus, you will no longer be the same after the resurrection gets through working in your life. That means whatever your name was, whatever your sin was, whatever your situation was, the Lord has changed your name because the blood has redeemed you and the blood has washed you. Goodbye, everybody. I hope y'all have a good week and the Lord blesses y'all real good. But I just wish somebody would celebrate the fact with me that the Lord has changed your name. They used to call you an alcoholic but the Lord now calls you blessed because of the resurrection because of the work of God in your life the Lord is getting ready to make some supernatural changes to your name to your family's name to your bank account and I declare and decree that the work of the resurrection will never stop in your life no matter how bad times get the resurrection will always work just for you What a wonderful change that has been brought in my life since Jesus came in to my heart. Listen, the work of the resurrection is ongoing, my brothers and sisters. Continue to deny your flesh. Continue to walk in the spirit, knowing that God is changing your name. You're not the person you were last year. You're not the person you were six months ago. God wants you to know that the beauty of the resurrection is that you continue to grow and that you continue to be drawn closer to him. So as the resurrection works for you this week, I pray that God will walk before you to guide your path. I pray that this week the Lord will walk behind you just to watch your back. May our God walk beside you this week so you never know what it feels like to be lonely. And finally, may the Lord walk around you just to keep you covered. May he bless you real good from your family here at the House of Crazy Faith in Hot Springs. Have a good week. We'll see you later.